Hello everyone, Chris back again with you in Gaming Zone. Yes, it's been 2 years since the last tier list which I've produced on my channel related to Battlefield 2 mods, but still, better late than never. Today I bring you finally the outtake which I have over the Battlefield franchise. This is my Battlefield tier list which I wanted to produce for quite some time, and sadly only now in Gaming Zone Zero I actually woke up to the realization Man, I do need to create one so I can actually classify and explain why my views are different on different titles. So this is the tier list which I've prepared for today. I have all of the games including from the start, some exclusives which really haven't been talked about and also some launch states for the Frostbite titles cause they have been quite different compared to the original and the final release respectively. Anyways, enough with the yapping, let's actually start delving into this thing. Roll the intro. So everyone, it's been quite a while since I've actually featured the tier list here. And here are the prepared guests which I have today, starting from 1942 to Battlefield Mobile, which has been cancelled. I still am gonna rate that because... I did see some screenshots and gameplays on it, so I kinda consider that as an experience. Well, anyway everyone, here is the tier list which I've prepared, and let's start off with 1942. So, let's actually switch up uh, my mic like this, and let's rate it out. Personally, I think this game is great. I'm going to drop it right there. For a first entry, actually, it's quite great. It has infantry combat, I know it doesn't really have squads, but still. Vehicles are here, classes are here, uh, the 64 players layouts are here, everything is set up so you can actually play the game, pretty fun. Yeah, for a first game in the franchise, this is a solid start. Oh yes, uh, here are the typical useless fellas. <laughs> ah yes, uh, ragdolls of course. Oh, that was a straight hit. It just spawned in me. Yeet. Uh, 1990, boys. Next up in our list is Battlefield Vietnam. Truth to be told, I've actually played it once in my life and it was during the Battlefield Marathon which I held on my channel. Of course, it stopped at Battlefield 2 because yours truly was too lazy to actually feature the console versions, but still, I have tried this one out and it was pretty enjoyable. Honestly, I'm gonna rate it as good. Yes, this one is smaller compared to 1942, but still it's a great experience. I can't say it's really subpar because it delivered a lot of content. Although, as I said, it's smaller in scope, that's why it has a lower rating compared to what I could do. Also, I would like to say that this actually inspired the future DLC for Bad Company 2, and I will cover that in the upcoming video with the DLC tier list, so stay tuned for that. Okay, I'm gonna be more careful just shooting this thing. Hello, boys. I have arrived uh, with some democracy. Ah. Oh. Well, he took me out, but that was a good run. Just saying. Moving on, we have, I think, the greatest Battlefield game that I've ever played. Of course, I'm talking about Battlefield 2. So who am I to kid? Let's just drop it right here. Why this game is peak? Well, this thing is probably the best battlefield that ever happened in this franchise. We got squad system, we got commander system, we got maps, we got free DLCs. Not only that, the DLCs gave you interesting content, for example night vision, some gave you actually uh, new armies, new vehicles, new weapons. Basically everything was cool and unique in the battlefield 2 related to DLCs and the base game itself. Not only that, the game actually gave you mod tools so you could create mods for the game, alongside the already huge catalog of content. And of course, this basically gave Battlefield 2 infinite lifespan. That's why I still play Battlefield 2 mods to this day and I even rate them on my channel. This game is truly the peak of Battlefield franchise and I truly mean it. This game is amazing and definitely deserves that S tier. Hello. You can't make this thing up, and this game is against me. <laughs> Moving on, we have Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. 
I'm going to be real with you, I never played this one. That's why I've actually created the uh, square right here to have the not played games. This game was released for consoles, that's why I haven't really had the chance to play it, even though we still have emulation. I haven't found any ISO files for this thing, that's why I haven't really tried it out to see what the thing is about. I know this game released for PlayStation 2, uh, for Xbox, the first one, and Xbox 360 via backwards compatibility. I've seen some gameplay for it, so I can't really say I'm a huge fan of it, I know it's basically a campaign, something related to war in Kazakhstan or something, basically some crack dreams uh, related uh, to some other stuff. And also apparently it has a completely different engine compared to ours, so it, this one is like extremely specific in the whole Battle franchise. But still I haven't played it, so I can't really rate it, that's why I'm going to uh, send it down there. Next up in line we have 2142 Battlefield. Yeah, for some reason they decided to just switch up the names for this uh, sequel project, but anyways. Battlefield 2142. This title is the scapegoat, let's say, no one really was interested in the future setting for Battlefield. That's why it was mostly ignored by people. I know uh, this one also had pretty bad sales, that's why it's mostly considered the black sheep of this franchise. But anyway, I still it is a good game. Let's actually just throw it up into the great category. Sadly, this one is quite limited in its scope. It doesn't feature a lot of vehicles. It introduced walkers, it introduced like floating tanks, floating vehicles. You know, the whole futuristic setting thing. But sadly, it only featured one booster pack, which was paid, I think, at first. Then it was released for free to everyone. Basically, this thing aged quite poorly compared to Battlefield 2. It does support mods, but you still have to do some workarounds. I remember seeing like not a lot of them and some of them just straight up rip 2142 into Battlefield 2. Yeah, this title hasn't aged quite well, but still it's a great game. It does have uh, interesting concepts. It does have uh, new interesting game modes. For example, uh, Titan mode, which basically was converted into Battlefield 4 with carrier assault. Still a decent game, I can't really hate it, but it has some issues that unfortunately draw it back a bit. Okay. I also have C4. So oh. Now moving on, I'd like to say that the following three titles, once again I haven't played them because I didn't have a chance to. So starting off we have Bad Company. I uh, recently only got an Xbox and I've played a bit of a campaign. I, I found it quite interesting, although it was the first uh, Frostbite game it still was held up back. I think it was even smaller in scope compared to Battlefield 2. To, uh, it was basically mostly like 1942. It was also the first spin-off, and it was exclusive on the consoles. I haven't touched multiplayer at all, I've only played a bit of a campaign. And sadly the multiplayer is closed as well because the servers have been shut down by EA. Thank you very much Electronic Arts, as always you enjoy ruining people's uh, fun. Same thing I would like to say about Battlefield Heroes, I haven't played this one. This one is also a spin-off, and the main important thing I guess is that the fact that it was free. This was basically the first time Electronic Arts tried to do free-to-play stuff related to Battlefield. And this one was mostly a spin-off, basically just divided completely from the main series, having its own vibe I suppose. I haven't touched it at all even though it was free, and sadly the multiplayer was closed I think in 2014 or something, way back in the day. I never had the chance to play it, I haven't found mods for Battlefield 2 featuring this thing, that's why I can't really say a lot about it. So it will remain the not played. Also I would like to say that 1943, yes it was a remake of 1942 in the Frostbite engine. And the same fate, it was locked to consoles only and it was only multiplayer. It had no single player, it was smaller in scope, that's why I'm going to throw it in not played. I've seen some gameplay of it, it has some interesting mechanics, for example like bombing raids. Wake Island has been remade there, which looks quite great. But again, I can't really say a lot about it, because I haven't played it. I haven't experienced the gameplay uh, progression here, that's why I'm just going to feature it in not played section. Moving on, we have yet another greatest of all time entry. Let's actually just not kid ourselves again, and let's throw this lovely folk into S tier. 
Once again, this is actually the first Frostbite title which I really enjoyed. It had the Vietnam expansion pack which gave basically a completely different experience compared to everything else. While in Battlefield 2 it actually, you know, gave you some cool stuff, it was basically set in the same setting in the same timeline. For Bad Company 2 it actually gave you a completely unique experience for the DLCs. The campaign was fun, the multiplayer was fun, although I still have some complaints on how the multiplayer part was shared to everyone, cause it had some weirdness related to map packs, and uh, sadly the co-op mode which was featured on the consoles never made its way into the PC because of Battlefield 3, the title which was developed afterwards. I'm giving this one the S tier because honestly it's a great product, I've enjoyed the campaign, I've enjoyed uh, the multiplayer, I've enjoyed the DLC, everything for it is great. And thankfully community even managed to work around the frostbite engine limits and actually created mods for it as well. Although I could only see them online, I couldn't play them myself, but still. It's great that this game still has community support and even mods behind it. So, once again, this one is S tier. Actually, I've prepared something special here, now that I've actually had a chance to. This thingy right here, which was an experimental thing try attempted to do by Electronic Arts, it's called Battlefield Online. This was basically Battlefield 2, but for Chinese uh, market. Having some different approach to the whole things related to the gameplay, I think they had some interesting progression going down there and also different UI compared to Battlefield 2. Unfortunately I haven't played this thing because of course it's China exclusive and it was shut down I think about half a year or so or it was never released. The details for this thing are pretty sparse. But still I wanted to feature it here because this thing is a historic uh, thing. Oh, and now we have our first doozy when it comes to the Battlefield games. Battlefield play for free. I'm going to be real with you, I'm just going to drop it right here. Uh, as I said in my original tier list, trash belongs to trash. This thing was garbage. I played it back in 2013, 2014. I think I had about two years of uh, gameplay experience on this thing. And as you could hear by the title, this one was play for free. It had basically Battlefield 2 maps, edited so they could have different settings. They had some custom original maps as well. They even had the rush game mode somehow introduced in the refractor engine. But uh, the grind was insane. It was an insane free to play game. You had to grind a lot, you had to invest a lot of money to have progression in it. Honestly, it wasn't fun. I remember playing like days and days, weeks even, trying to unlock some weapons and it was just misery. The only positive thing out of uh, Play for Free honestly was the fact that when it closed, some uh, Battlefield 2 mods basically took its content, remade it in Battlefield 2 and gave it away for free. Battlefield 2 had mods having uh, Play for Free content actually available to players. You could try out AN94, you could uh, try out XM8, all the good things. So yeah, this one is the first doozy when it comes to the Battle franchise, that's why it deserves the F tier, it belongs in the trash. Moving on, now we have the bigger and, I guess, the huge scope titles in the Battle franchise. Starting with Battle 3, EA and DICE actually worked a lot on making the game more realistic. And with Battlefield 3, I've actually featured two versions now, we have the launch version and the final version which has all of the DLCs. Honestly, at launch it was pretty good. I'm actually going to throw it right here in good. Because at launch it had content, but it had tons of balancing issues, tons of technical issues. I could see the night bugs where everyone could just float through buildings. I've seen uh, incredible balance issues, for example the USAs, the FAMAS, the M16A3, like a lot of issues which basically made the game at launch quite questionable. That's why I'm going to throw it in the good category, because once again it was held back by technical issues back in the day. It needed some patches, it needed some improvements, the campaign had bugs, uh, the co-op thing had bugs. A lot of problems related to technical side, that's why I'm going to throw it in the good tier. Moving on, we now have the final version. For the final version, once again, I'm throwing it on peak. Why so? Because this game is amazing. They did 5 DLCs, which were incredible. We got like remaster maps from Battlefield 2, we got close quarters, we got armored kill, which was eh at best, mediocre. We got aftermath, which basically covered the events from campaign in multiplayer, showing what actually happened after the earthquake. 
and end game which had cool uh, environmental changes we had fall we had spring winter and so on we had the season theme which were amazing since Battlefield 3 the netcode issues started to appear pretty strong and going forward the dice have been basically working on fixing this thing and sadly to no avail even into 2024 it still has issues with netcodes but still you could forgive this because the game honestly was amazing the trailers were amazing the campaign was cool co-op was interesting Basically everything related to Battlefield 3 was amazing, the style, the looks, everything. Happy birthday Battlefield 3, thank you for the amazing memories and the fun times in Operation Metro, Dama Van Peak, Caspian Border. Thank you guys for such an amazing product that created friendships that last to this day. A modern classic that stood the trial of time and will never be forgotten by the community. Moving on we now have Battlefield 4. I think I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this, but before we continue and actually going further into this, I'm going to drop uh, the launch game into F tier. Battlefield 4 at launch was a rushed piece of shit. It was laggy, stuttering, had performance issues, technical bugs, crashes, netcode issues, the base game had garbage locations, the... I, I can't stop ranting about this thing. The launch state of Battlefield 4 was honestly a disappointment. After the highest peaks, Related to Battlefield 3, to Bad Company, they had like a cool two games in a row which were amazing. Yeah, they had to sacrifice some things here and there, but still, they ended up pretty amazing. Then they dropped the doozy at launch which was Battlefield 4 and it was a disappointment. The campaign was dull and boring compared to Battlefield 3. Like, it's Oscar worthy for Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4 it's like, what the hell is this? Everyone is just crying. I know the setting looks cool, but the campaign was honestly mediocre at best. The co-op was cut, sadly no co-op for you everyone. Multiplayer had, as I said, tons of technical issues, the balance was garbage, netcode was problematic, a lot of issues. That's why I know I might get burned for this, but still, I believe Battlefield 4 at launch was a piece of shit that shouldn't have been delayed, I think, into 2014 for better polishing. So we could have received the greater mark. Speaking of greater marks, let's actually mark the current Battlefield 4 which belongs into the great tier. I'm going to throw it right here. Why it's great? Sadly, the maps at launch are still garbage. We have like, I think, three maps which are really memorable. I know it's Zavod 311, Flood Zone, and also Shanghai. Everything else is like basically for the looks, not a lot of interesting gameplay happening there. They had some DLCs which actually corrected course, they released updates, they brought in new content, some remakes from Battlefield 3, unfortunately no, not a lot of original takes on it, they basically just took Battlefield 3 maps, threw it into Frostbite 3, remade a bit of assets and here we go, that's a DLC. China Rising was a disappointment, like I think only one map out of that thing was really playable. We got uh, the Operations, we got Dragon's Thief which was quite amazing and Final Stand which basically queued in things to Battlefield 2142. Overall, the Battlefield 4 experience was improved, it's now a great game, you can play it, you can enjoy it. It still has uh, drawbacks compared to Battlefield 3. The design on locations is pretty mediocre, tons of copy-paste weapons, some of them are basically just swap models. And overall, like assignments and stuff, some of them are too grindy, some of them are like pretty easy to do. Overall, it has quite some drawbacks which uh, held it back from the peak. Still, it's a great game which I really recommend you to play and enjoy. That's it for today, friends. I hope you like this format. If you do so, please drop a like below if you want more reviews and guides for Battlefield 4 weapons and maps. Don't forget to subscribe and comment down below your opinions about AK-12. Moving on, now we have the first tragedy in this franchise, which is Battlefield Hardline. I know this is going to be quite an unpopular opinion, but Battlefield Hardline was actually a good game. Unfortunately, it had the wrong title in it, which was Battlefield. This one is once again the black sheep of this franchise because it features the cops and robbers theme. It doesn't have anything related to military, it's basically just a game with the Battlefield title slapped on it. The timing of the release for this game was honestly really bad. It released when Battlefield 4 had issues, and I think it was 2014, late 2014, when they wanted to drop this thing and it was basically just a copy paste of Battlefield 4. They didn't even shy away to just reuse animations from Battlefield 4. Everyone hated this game and when it released after it was delayed in 2015, it was doomed to fail on PC. 
Thankfully on consoles it's actually still alive and you can really enjoy it, but on PC it's basically dead. On launch I'm gonna say it was an average game. Cause once again it was mostly just a copy paste of Battlefield 4, but you know setting the cops and robbers team, they delayed it, they actually created some cool content for it, they created even cool gameplay elements for it, and overall it was cool but the gameplay experience was average, you were locked just to infantry, you had some choppers which could just fly but there were no attack helicopters, and just cars with you know armored machine gun things. Honestly it wasn't cool at all, when it came to the technical side it was downgraded. It had its own interesting feature, for example if someone played a medic you could, could just go to them, just grab a med bag and run away, which sadly never actually moved on to other games in the franchise. This game has some unique features that never actually transcended and went through the newer titles. And rating the final game, I suppose this one receives a good uh, title. It received 4 uh, cool DLCs, uh, set on different themes, they had interesting maps. Sadly I didn't get the time to play it, because as I said on PC, it was alive for a little bit then it just absolutely died and disappeared. On consoles I know the situation is different, but I'm really bad at playing uh, on controller, that's why I'm only just saying this based on my own experience. Unfortunately it still was held back by the name in its title and low player count, weird takes on the mechanics, like it was a black sheep in this franchise, just like 2142. It wasn't really a success, that's why it uh, flopped on PC, but it's still alive on consoles. Personally I wasn't really a huge fan of it, I've only just farmed hotwire for XP's to unlock weapons. Yeah, this thing is quite sad, let me tell you that. So for me personally, Hardline is good, it's still held back by problems, as I said, related to electronic arts, to its name and other different factors. Oh, this is where I'm gonna get a lot of hate. Yeah, Battlefield 1, uh, you just uh, go here real quick, thank you very much. Battlefield 1 was absolute trash. At launch, the game was the most stable out of all games <laughs> released in the Battlefield franchise, even more stable than Battlefield Hardline. Why so? Because it had no content. This game sacrificed customization, it sacrificed lots of features uh, introduced in Hardline, introduced in Battlefield 4, even some in Battlefield 2 were missing at launch in Battlefield 1. It was so tragic. The maps are open fields, the launch state was absolute garbage. You could enjoy I think St. Quentin's Scar if you had like a real good time, if you found a, good, a real good team. And also I think Amiens, which was, let's be real, the most farmed map in Battlefield 1. Overall I wasn't a huge fan of the launch Battlefield 1 and this hasn't changed a lot. But honestly Battlefield 1 was the turning point in DICE becoming lazy. They started releasing a lot less content, they cut out a lot of things in this title. I don't care that it's World War 1, that it's a limited setting, it's the first time. They cut a lot of features out, even from Battlefield 2, which were featured. It was missing in Battlefield 1. It was so sad. Uh, I still have a video related to it, I think I might show it in the corner or even some uh, moments of it, but still. Where is the customization dice? This is the main feature of Battlefield since Bad Company 2. You can even see deeper growth in Hardline's Forgotten Gun Bench feature, behind the paywall sadly. To this day I'm not a huge fan of this game, and moving on to its final state I believe, the game is subpar. Why so? Because the first DLC actually introduced new content, uh, the second one introduced new factions, new vehicles, uh, basically introduced some cool content, but then it just fell off flatly. Afterwards, Turning Tides was split into two parts, it was the laziest DLC I've ever played. Heligoland Bite is basically just a rock surrounded by sea, there is no infantry gameplay there, just vehicle as I like to call it. And I will straight up shut up about Apocalypse, cause it got only 3 maps, with tons of issues related to balancing, except Passchendaele. Uh, also we got 2 maps in air superiority which were straight up ripped from uh, the campaign thrown in the background and here we go, this is a game mode, Air Superiority and Conquest Assault. Honestly, the support for this game was pathetic, the updates were slow, they removed the features, then they added back them in, everyone was praising them, they tried even to create uh, the eSports uh, thingy, which also flopped and died, Battlefield 3 was great, Battlefield 4 had its issues but then went back up, Battlefield 1 remained a pathetic piece of shit. It's, it's just an atmospheric game, it's a cool movie to look, 
but to play it and experience it, it's not fun at all. Overall, the design for the maps, the design for the classes, overall gameplay and mechanics are pretty bad in this game. Like, even Battlefield 4 at launch was more interesting than whatever the game offers me in the retail package. I know the game is stable, but still, it doesn't salvage it from the fact that it was designed like absolute garbage. So, that is it about Battlefield 1. The rant is over, but we are gonna move on to another one, which I think is quite worse. I couldn't believe my eyes how the franchise, instead of going an evolutionary way, went to degradation, with 4-hour campaigns, cut content from start, and customization missing at all. It didn't help the situation with ridiculous problems going on there in the close quarters maps. Moving on, we have my mortal enemy, which is Battlefield 5, or as I like to call it back in the day, Battlefield V. Trash belongs in trash. Battlefield V was a disappointment and basically was a flop in the Battlefield franchise. I thought that Battlefield 1 was a huge downgrade when it came to gameplay. Yes, it looked cool, yes, it gave the atmosphere, but still. Battlefield V threw everything out of the window. It had worse graphics, worse visuals, uh, it was pandering into politics, it had tons of issues at launch, no content at all. If you turn on ray tracing, this was basically the thing which was selling the game. Yeah, it destroys absolutely your PC. They basically destroyed classes, they destroyed uh, the visuals, they destroyed the immersion. The UI was absolute garbage, they started taking cues into the UI design from Call of Duty. Oh man, I can't stop ranting about this thing. I even have like, I think, a 40 minute video on why this game is garbage. And I even have like a Battlefield V is over video because I really hated this game. 4 half-assed war stories that nobody cared about, 8 boring multiplayer maps, 2 of which were from alpha and beta versions of the game, and that was basically it. What? Did you expect something more? Well, too bad for you. DICE at best efforts released about 25% of what the final product was supposed to be, and everything promised by the developers was either missing or coming soon, trademark included. With time it actually got some updates, it also again tried to do a competitive uh, game, just like Battlefield 1, the history repeats itself. Just like the World War 1 entry, the World War 2 entry also flopped when it came to the thing which was trying to sell, which was of course the esports thing. The final version of Battlefield V, honestly I'm going to throw it into average. Launch Battlefield V was a disappointment, but the final product is actually quite playable. They actually changed course, they removed all of that nonsense related to pandering, they actually removed uh, the attrition system, of course, uh, by the end of it, uh, they uh, wanted to change course, and just like the recent one which I'm going to cover, they cut out the support at the right time. The game started turning tides, it actually showed potential down the line, it just needed, I think, about one more year of support to introduce new factions, to introduce new weapons, basically rework the whole gameplay. But Electronic Arts, in its classic vibe, just decided to pull out the plug and let it rot. That's why it remains in the average category, it truly really showed potential, it truly really showed signs of it being interesting, but Electronic Arts at its finest decided that no, you do not deserve uh, the right uh, support. That's why it uh, has died a horrible death and it received the average state. These are my final words related to this title in the franchise. Unlike Battlefield 1, I'll never return to play this garbage ever again. Goodbye Battlefield 5. Nobody will miss you, and I'm glad your travesty of a journey is finally over. 2042. Yet another disappointment and flop in this franchise. I'm going to straight up drop the launch version into trash. The launch state was absolutely pathetic. I'm not gonna even try to attempt to discuss this thing. The multiplayer was broken. They removed the campaign out of this thing. They had three modes. Portal was a cool concept, which was held back by multiplayer. Hazard Zone is dead. Like... To this day is dead, at launch it was uh, dead on arrival and to this day it remained dead. Multiplayer was absolutely pathetic, they removed the scoreboard, they removed tons of features once again. They tried to do 120 players and the maps were straight up empty fields, you were just running into beautiful pre-rendered cutscenes. Well, you were rendering them in real time but still, the launch state was absolutely pathetic. I can't stress enough how garbage 2042 is. I actually have some videos about it uh, with uh, the cancelled support, I'm going just to throw it up right here. It just had to happen. And DICE had my hopes up for this game, even if the beta was in a very miserable state when it dropped. 
Just like some memes of the internet, fast forward a couple of months, and I'm complaining about this disastrous launch of Battlefield 2042. All of that confidence that everything is ahead of schedule, that all studios at Electronic Arts work on this project, just a ton of lies to assure people that everything is alright before shipping a train wreck. Let's have a serious discussion. 2042 at launch was absolute garbage. I want to forget this title exists, but unfortunately, for this tier list, I have to introduce it right here. And as you can see, in the trash tier, like, all the recent uh, Frostbite titles started gathering like infinity stones. As for the final state of 2042, honestly, I'm going to give it the subpar. Uh, it has less content than Battlefield V. That's so tragic. Like, for each season, only one map was introduced. Only by the final season, which was the seventh season, called Turning Point. Yeah, I know the irony, like, they called the season Turning Point just when the game actually started showing potential and once again the support was cut and the game was left abandoned to rot and die. So, the game has fixed tons of its problems, they remade the maps, they remade the events, they introduced new weapons, but still, it's low in amount compared to Battlefield V. Battlefield V's free support had more content than 2042 in its life cycle. And just when it finally showed potential, just like Battlefield V, they pulled the support. And honestly, Battlefield 2042 is subpar, it still has issues, it still has netcode problems. Hazard Zone is dead, there is no campaign to play. Uh, what else can you say? All Out Warfare is something, but they even started porting content from Portal into it. Portal got some updates here and there, but it was basically left abandoned to rot and die. It still only got like 3 games in it while people expected for it to have more uh, experiences. Overall, 2042 in its complete package is still a disappointment, it's subpar, and it's not enjoyable at all. Unfortunately, that's the reality of things. Battlefield has been through dire straits ever since Battlefield 1, and by the looks of it, it's not going to change. As for myself, I truly believe that Battlefield has completely lost its way. I haven't enjoyed a fully-fledged game since 2018 with Battlefield 1. It's been nearly 6 years of wait for me to have a good Battlefield experience. And last but not least, I wanted to feature yet another game which was promised to arrive on mobiles. This was, I think, the third game which they attempted to create on mobiles, but once again it failed and died. Of course, I'm talking about Battlefield Mobile, a thing which they attempted to copy Call of Duty, just like Call of Duty Mobile, we had a Battlefield Mobile. And uh, once again, we're going to throw it into the trash tier. Because, yeah, this one is once again a huge disappointment. I've seen uh, some gameplay of it and it looked like a Battlefield 3, but I think on the lowest possible settings it was running on like potato graphics. I think even uh, worse, you could set Battlefield 3 at lowest settings and it still would look better than Battlefield Mobile, I think, at Ultra. Yeah, this thing was pathetic. And of course, it also got cancelled because it was such a disappointment, like... I think uh, back then uh, Electronic Arts was working on restructuring and they basically decided, you know what, it's not worth spending a lot of money trying to copy Call of Duty. That's why they cancelled it and it was left abandoned to rot and die. So yes, as you can see, this is the tier list, the recent ones all belong in the trash tier. It's truly sad. So we have three peak titles, which are Battlefield 2, Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3. We also get, uh, got great titles like uh, 1942, 2142 and Battlefield 4, with good titles like Vietnam, Battlefield 3 at launch and Battlefield Hardline. Everything else, yeah, I don't really recommend to try it out, even Battlefield 1. Yes, it looks superior, but still, it's absolute garbage. And the trash tier is filled with basically Play for Free, which was a pathetic attempt at Electronic Arts, trying to monetize uh, players which don't have money, and the launch states, alongside the failed uh, Battlefield Mobile thing. Yes, Battlefield series unfortunately is going through some dire times. That's sad to see. Anyways, this is about it. This is a wrap for this tier list. I hope you enjoyed my takes over this franchise. I know some of them are quite controversial. For example, like Battlefield 1. Some of them are like cold, for example, 2042, but still. These are my takes on this franchise, which I wanted to share with you everyone. Uh, before you go, I actually wanted to say that I am preparing the DLC uh, tier list for Battlefield uh, franchise. I'm going to feature expansion packs, starting from 1942 and of course ending up with seasons with 2042. Anyways, thank you for watching everyone. 
This was Chris. See you in the game zone.